All right, I think we can get started. Good evening, everyone. I welcome you to this webinar on CFE simulations today. I am Yashima and I will be moderating your session. Today's webinar is jointly organized by SDI and Building Energy Efficiency Project, also known as BEEP. The Indo-Swiss BEEP is a bilateral cooperation project between the Federal Department of Foreign Affairs of the Swiss Confederation and the Ministry of Power Government of India. The overall goal of the project is to reduce energy consumption in new commercial, public, and residential buildings in India through energy efficient and thermally comfortable design. Today, we will learn about the Vayu Pravaha tool developed under this project. Our expert today will introduce you to the history and rationale of CFD and give a demo of the tool to develop form and design windows in an early design stage. He will also show how to compare different airflow patterns across buildings. I would also like to acknowledge the support of the Department of Science and Technology and all our supporters and affiliates. Our expert today is Pierre Jeboidov. Pierre, who leads the Swiss PMTU of the Indo-Swiss Beep project, has over 35 years of experience and has been involved in Beep's conceptualization, overall planning and management. He is also actively involved in simulation and performance monitoring, development of the Vayu Pravha tool, innovative technological solutions, and supporting the IEA trainings on buildings. Thank you for joining us today, Pierre. Over to you. Thank you. Good afternoon. You can now share your screen. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, your screen is visible. We can see the tool right now, Pierre. Right, exactly. Yeah. Yes. Okay. My screen is visible. So welcome everybody for this in this uh, session. So what we are going to explain a little bit is first some introduction on the logic which is behind the development of the software. And then uh, we will demonstrate and show how you can use it on a basic level. And anyway, it is meant to be a basic tool and not a very sophisticated one. And then uh, we are going to to show you also some of the typical results of analysis that we can have, whether it is outside or inside some of the building. So, so I think one thing that we have seen, especially in country like India, where the vast majority of people do not yet and do not have uh, air conditioning in their residential and their dwellings. Uh, that was the reason why we started thinking about this. And a couple of years ago, I would say it was very difficult to imagine because we had uh, the, the, the software called OpenFoam, which is a source, free source uh, uh, CFD, computational free dynamics, but, but it does not uh, allow, uh, it does not have, uh, let's say, user-friendly kind of of, of interface. And uh, with the time we realized a couple of years ago that now the interface were possible to be developed. And uh, that's how we started developing this uh, about two and a half year ago now. We have been doing this with the University of Applied Science in Sion in Switzerland and with some young engineer from EPFL Institute of Technology in Lausanne. Uh, the, the basics, it's so to say, scientific uh, uh, development has been published in, on, on this, uh, on, the, on the International uh, Journal of Physics Conference series in September 2021. And then you can, uh, you can see the, this if you want to go into more detail on, the, on what is behind the software. Then I would say what, what we try to also explain a little bit is that if you think about how did people manage to 
look at air movement and uh, around and within buildings. So for a lot of centuries, can you see my my cursor? Yes, yes, you. Okay. So then, so one one thing is that people are still using is so called the wet finger. You know, you do like this and and feel where the direction because it's where it's cooling more. Or some people are using kind of flags or whatever. And also people were using the wind already a long time ago with this kind of old windmills to which were making essentially grain uh, uh, powder like. Um, and then after came the simple calculation method which were developed by a famous scientist Bernoulli which has some limitation to some special cases but I'll show you how you can understand how it works compared to the CFD in a sense. Then after what came in, you can say early, late uh, 19th century is what uh, what we call the wind tunnel. That means a place where you have a big fan and you are getting objects being blown over. And you can see by visualizing with smoke, like you see here, uh, the, the airflow on, on small models. And uh, then if you look at the computational fluid dynamics, uh, the, the CFD, it's a quite recent history, actually. And so, so just as a remember for the one who have or who have never seen it, but I think most of you must have seen the Bernoulli equation, which is the logic that you have a constant total pressure, what we call or energy along the line, uh, P being at the beginning of one streamline, the, the static pressure that you could measure just with a manometer a micro manometer. Then you have the velocity to square times the density divided by two. And then you have the elevation in relation with the energy, which is the density times the, the acceleration times the, the height. And then this can be used, for instance, and I think that's where I'll show you an example to compare with the CFD later that if you follow one of this streamline, if you say far away, the, the, the pressure, the static pressure, let's say it's about zero. So we can remove this uh, far away. We can say there is a velocity, but there is no pressure. It is just atmospheric pressure and it is the same. Then there is a velocity. And then we say the, the, the air stream is going the airstream is, is going on the same level. So the, the, the elevation energy does not change the pressure. So we come to the stagnation point, which is the pressure at this point where really the flow comes and stops at the, hits the wall and is at zero velocity at some point. And then we come to the conclusion that the, what we call the kinetic uh, energy or the, the total pressure is equal to a density times the square of the velocity divided by two far away. And this is something which is, which is used for different things. The pitot tube in aircraft are also based on this actually, more sophisticated in their analysis today, but, but basically it is still the same. So this equation is very valid for few application, but the issue is that when you want to look at how the air is moving between buildings or through buildings, you need to have more equations to derive this. And this equation have been developed in the late, uh, you can say 19th century, early uh, and early 19th century. It's called Navier-Stokes equation. It is essentially a continuity. That means there is no loss of mass, no creation of mass. There is then the momentum equation, which represents the dynamic of the system. And then you have the energy in relation to also the temperature and the, and the kind of density and thing like this. So these are uh, things which have been developed, you can say early, but there was no uh, computer yet to be able to use this. So you can say it, it is quite recent. If you look at the history, it was the first modern you can say numerical analysis to try to calculate things with big matrices, matrix, you know, well, that you have been certainly dealing in your maths. Uh, it has been published only in 1947. 
and then if you if you see the progress in computers they came in the 50s you can say 1950s 1970s where uh, the first really beginning of simulation of computational fluid dynamics trying to solve the the famous navier stoke equation i just spoke about it was during these 20 years that this began to come and then the first uh, fluid mechanics software to become commercially available under the direction of Professor Spalding and Chum in London, it, it, they developed it from 1974 to 1981. And only in 1981, they came out with the first commercial CFD. And so now if you look at the, the CFD market today, there are a number of well-known uh, let's say a, a small, uh, less than a dozen, I would say, of them, but they are all very expensive. The price of the license range from, you can say, 20,000 to 90,000 euro for one license. And so it's out of reach for most of the people in, in small scale company, even in Europe, and few people have it, like our, for instance. And uh, and then that's why we were interested in seeing whether we could develop something using the open source, uh, open form software, which have been developed and released in the, in 2004, and which has become something which is used a lot in, in the universities and by academics, but it's very difficult to use per se because the interface are not designed for, or there are some, some uh, possibility to to rent a kind of interface in germany there is some place called some company called simscale which is actually providing uh, that you can use it but it's also a pay service which is quite uh, expensive so why why do we need to really look at the wind driven natural ventilation we know that at night, if you can bring a lot of air, something like 10 air change per hour, you can really cool down at night your, the mass of your building, which, which is very efficient for the ne next day. One of the main issues is that in the dense urban context in country like India or many of the country, you can say whether it is in, in Far East or even also in, some, in Africa, in some of the big cities, we can see that the, the projects that are coming are, you can say, large building. This is an example for a 2000 uh, uh, dwelling project. I just showed the principle and you see that the wind is quite good. But if you see the red means a high velocity, five meter per second almost. But then it reaches, uh, it hits the first bar. And then the next building behind, they have hardly any if you see that it's almost zero velocity so that means these people will have a very good maybe cross ventilation or natural ventilation the other one will have hardly anything and this is uh, verified by quite few studies and also lab scale level and i think here what is important to see is for instance depending on the surface of the wall the, the temperature of the wall uh, and the temperature of the air entering, this is the temperature difference. You can see that when you are two air change, which is quite typical of what happens if you have no wind almost, and if you have the window open, and if you have really good wind, you can reach maybe 13 air change. So this is just a, a study which was done in uh, between Switzerland and Denmark, and they did some really good lab work. And you can see that between if you say you have four or five degree, you have something like one watt per square meter that you can remove with the air passing. And if you are at 13 air change, you're at six. So that means there is a factor six of the energy you can remove uh, to the structure of the, of the building. So that means if you have really a lot of air passing through your building at night, then you have really a good night cooling. Uh, so, of course, now one of the one of the question is that you need to be able to assess a little bit how does it work. And if you see, uh, 
something like this, which is which which is something which is in some of the city in India. I don't remember where. So if you see that, how can you guess how the wind that comes will go through? How will it uh, how will it come or not come? And so, oh, sorry, what happened? There is something. Okay, yeah, sorry. Uh, then you also have what is the, the layout of the building, of course, that we see here. And then also the facade design will also have an influence on whether you are able to have, of course, ventilation. Of course, the, the, the distribution of the of the the flats, the way they are also in, in architectural term uh, placed in the in in the in the buildings. So so we can say generally we can see that the design of natural ventilation, which means the building massing to start with, is often done with uh, intuition. And one of the question is, are the arrow uh, showing really how the air would move or is it just a drawing that people do and imagine? And so, the, as I mentioned before, the hand calculation is something which is not sufficient or often impossible. So that's why the software, as I mentioned, they are very expensive. So that is why we have started developing uh, such a tool saying that if if everything goes well, we could we could really reach in India and even beyond India, a lot of people who could use this when they are designing. So the idea of this is that it can it can uh, simulate uh, quite large. For instance, this is an example of a district in in Geneva town, which is now you can say under construction. It's one of the rare projects we have in Switzerland with so much construction at once. And here we were asked to do some analysis of the wind distribution. It was too late because they already had planned all the building, but we could show them where are the critical part. And, and, uh, and this is part of the thing which were published also in this uh, paper. And uh, so, so now just to show you how it has been developed with uh, Jean Bequet, a scientist from this Applied University of Science in Lyon. He has done a lot of comparison with some of the wind tunnel and also generated uh, algorithm to make an automatic meshing so that you, you don't have to introduce any meshing on your on the side of the user. And we have here some demonstration of the a wind tunnel. That means suppose this is in a wind tunnel. So the wind is coming here. And now we look at the pressure, the sorry, the, the velocity that we are getting with the height along this, this plan reaching, you can say, the wall. And you can see that that the, the wind tunnel are the diamond one. And then the, the dotted, the small dot are with a commercial software, quite reputed. And then with open foam, you can see that we are matching almost better than the commercial software. So, so you can see that it, it gives confidence that you can do something with the software. Then the other thing also is was to a combination of comparison between a commercial software and open form used for Avayu Prava. Here we have a comparison with, with the commercial software. So you have nine buildings where the wind is reaching like this. And if you, and if you see, you can see that we, we have got a perfect match of colors to be sure we could compare visually. And you can see that the results with using open form is very comparable to the commercial software also. So we also have got some comparison with the with inside airflow also in wind tunnels. So you can see here the wind tunnel, and this is this kind of mock-up model. And uh, you can see that the results, the 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 blue dots are profiles. On, on the air on the air velocity uh, on the height of the of the tunnel and you can see that before and after we are getting a quite reasonable uh, uh, comparison between the between the wind tunnel and actually what is uh, simulated with uh, Vayu Prava in its uh... then here also to show you that we have uh, 
that we have, I, I like to do what we call an engineer check to get confidence. So if we come back to the Bernoulli equation saying that you have air reaching a big wall, uh, here it is 20 by 40 meter. And then you are, you are seeing how the wind is going to reach at the stagnation point. And you see that the, the value we are getting here is that where we have more or less the stagnation point, we are somewhere at five to six Pascal of pressure. That means the pressure which is generated by the velocity of the stream of the wind. And you can see that if we calculate with the same far velocity of three meter per second, and uh, we are getting very similar results than what you can calculate just with, uh, with flow and so, uh, with uh, open forms, sorry. And so, so this is the first part. I think if, uh, I, I'm not sure whether we can make, uh, take some question on the chat right now or whether, what is Yashima, how do you, how do you want to yeah. handle this? So uh, I think Pierre, you can continue. I mean, we can first do the demo of the tool and then we can take questions after that. Okay. Yeah. So what I will do is take the, so. So what I will do first is explain a little bit how you can use the software in terms of uh, practicalities. So essentially looking at what is, what we call the drawing editor, then the setup for simulation and then some example and then results and visualization of some examples. So I think the installation, I don't, I will jump this because we will get some more information after. Uh, here now, if you look at the, if we would, if we would look at the, at, sorry. Uh, if you look now at the software itself, you can see that we have we have essentially three. We don't see them because how can I remove this? Can you see the the three tabs here? Yes, yes, they are visible. Yeah. Okay, I, because I cannot see them because my I don't know how I can remove this this ribbon on the top. But anyway, it's not so important right now. Uh, okay, so now. So now you have these three. So you have one tab, which is the drawing editor. Then you have second tab, which is the simulation setup. And then you have the other, which is uh, the result visualization. And uh, so then if you want to make a new project, typically you have to go through these three tabs to, to make a project. So the first part is that you can uh, start either open an existing project that you already have in your database, so to say, or you can browse and search a project existing, which would not be on this place, or you can go uh, through new project. And then uh, in the new project, what you're doing, you create a case and then this is a, a typical configuration of, of buildings that you will, and then you have what we call the, the version one. The version one, then you can start by adding layers and you click here. And then what you are doing is you can then uh, get with the project that you will create, you, you have a case that means you, you, you want to select and then you will have different version of it. And now if you see this, it will show like this actually in the, in, you will have a new case, you will have, you will have a new project, you have new cases, and then you have version. That means you can have for the same uh, case, you can have different uh, version of it. And I will show you after. So when you, the, the first aim of this project, of this software is that you can use directly 2D files which are in DXF format. That means you can just export from, from AutoCAD or from any uh, drawing you can get. They, they should be uh, a little bit simple. I will explain why after. And there you can then uh, import 
you, you can just select the, the file you can see here. And then you can, here you have a, an example with, with some buildings and one other buildings here. And then you, you can select or unselect them. And then the thing which is important is that if you take some block like this or something where you want to see if, uh, maybe airflow inside, there is one thing which is important for people when you use this, the DXL file must be co-planner. That means they are in one plan. And, and the, the polylines which are, which are making the, the drawing, whether it is a block or whether it is something combined like this, it has to be closed. And this you can check normally if you go in, uh, in, in AutoCAD, for instance, you, can always, you have this option when you, are, when you have a complete uh, drawing that you want to import, you can, you can check that it's closed and then it, will, it won't give any problem at the import while you import it. Then once you have imported, you can also select the building that you would like that you would like to keep. So that means the blue are selected, the gray that you are importing from one DXF plan are, are not. And you can uh, you can select the, the different one. And then after you can you can create, so we can just quickly go through a video where you see that you can, you can create a case within a project. Then you can directly go and import, you see the DXF file here. And then you can select this and then you can select the one and now they are in the in the drawing editor and then uh, yeah, we are sorry then after that you can you can go and and to the simulation setup but first you have to enter the height of the building and that comes and this is done by selecting various building or selecting all of them. If you want, you can select all of them by using this, uh, this small uh, sign. And then you can then, uh, you can then uh, give the height of the building. This is for simple case where you have only buildings, which might be for instance, a seven story of about 20 meter height. So you just enter and you can select different height. For instance, uh, this one, which is uh, a building, which is, avoiding, you can say the wind to enter in the project, then you can change the height of this building for instance, to see how it works. So here you can just see here how you can select the height of the building and then you can enter it and that's it. Then you can also, the thing which is also very specific as an interface is that once you have entered, let's say you get a drawing from an architect or in your team, you get it in your team. Then you say, okay, but I would like to change the geometry. And so then what you can do is you can move buildings. You can move the buildings in from the top and you can very well change the geometry which give you a possibility to create a new version of it. So you see that you can either translate or vertical, horizontal in the plan, that means X, Y, and then in, and you can rotate also. And then you can also select multiple building by having in the color, the blue are the selected one, the, the, the other one are not. And then uh, you can, if you see that, you can see that you can select by using this button, you can select the one you want by in a square, in a, in a quadrangular kind of thing. And then you can give the height directly. And then you get the, the next you get then the thing and then sorry 
then you can also even delete the building if you want. And uh, so you can very well delete a building by just removing it and then it will be. So if you see here, we have, if you see here, you see that we have already three version of this case that have been created. So that means you can you can create different geometry and change for instance, you, you could very well uh, raise, uh, increase the height of some of the building and change, uh, for instance, the reduce the height of some other, then after you can you can then have different geometry with the wind and see how, for instance, if you have kind of staggering building, that means that the building are the first one is like this, the wind comes and hit this one, but then the next one is higher. So maybe you get also a better distribution of wind velocity on top of the buildings. And then, uh, so this is just that you can remove here, yeah. okay. And then you can then, uh, you can then add layers, but this I will, I will speak about it in the next uh, part actually, because I think we, we stay on, on this uh, simple geometry with external flow for the time being. So here uh, you, can, you, you can also, I would say this is more a practical thing is that what we have realized uh, when we started developing the thing is that normally, your plot of land, and I guess when you are when you are doing uh, an exercise with Salar Decathlon, it is the same. You are given a plot of land which has a given size, and that that's why what we recommend to do is that you create a kind of uh, virtual building here and here, which show the end of the layout, and then after you can you can rotate, move building, but within this the same thing, this same area, so that you are sure that it's realistic what you are doing in terms of, uh... and then uh, this again, I will come back to it later. I think it's, uh... now, now that you have done this, you, you could do it for the first one already and you have the height you can modify the height of the building once you enter into the simulation setup now. So now we enter in the in the next, we are in the next um, tab and now we are with the simulation setup. That means where we can still modify the height of the building. We cannot uh, modify the, the position. Here you can choose the cities and I will just show you the next one, the enlarger. So you have the drawing of the, the case, the, the sorry, sorry, sorry the, the variation, the, the version that you have. And then you can choose the, the profile that you want. And then you have to enter the wind direction. So here I say, I would say that it's important to realize that uh, I guess you are all familiar with uh, climate consultant, I suppose. And uh, if you have no other, let's say better data on wind, I think you can use a climate consultant in the area that you have a project and you can then choose different kind of uh, wind profile because we know that the wind profile are different whether if you have, a, if you are in, a, in, the, in, in, in the desert, you, you will have a, a very nice curve. When you are in the suburbs, you will have a different kind of, cur of curve. And if you are in the dense uh, urban area, you will again have a different one. Then after you give the reference wind velocity. So here I would say you can use climate consultant and the wind rows, and you can try to see in the hottest uh, moment of the season, let's say in June in, in Delhi, for instance, May, June, for instance, you could look at how the wind is mostly in which direction it is during the night between let's can say 10 in the evening and six in the morning, typically. That's where you are going to try to use natural ventilation to cool your building. And then you have the reference site, which is usually 10 meter in many of the, of the weather station. And then here you can then, depending on the number of physical CPU you have, you can 
you can choose. So if you have a machine which has two CPU, you can take two. But remember that if you take all the CPU, you may not be able to do a lot of things with your computer aside of that, because it will take a lot of the power because it actually use multi-thread. That means it will take the power from all the, the CPU. Then after you can run in approximate, uh, which is I think what we recommend as a solution scheme because it goes quite fast and that's how you can you can really uh, get a good a good and rapid kind of comparison between different cases. Then here you can clip also, but this I will show you again later with the demo directly that you can very well clip. Uh, that means make a cross section. So for, for solid building, it's not always very interesting, but when we have open building, you will see later that it's more interesting. Then before running the simulation, if you have not yet uh, uh, saved the, the project, you have to save the project before running the simulation. And then you have to define where it is here. One thing which is important also on this version of the software, you must have your, your uh, project file on the C drive, not on another drive. In the new version later, I'll explain later, you will not need to do that. But now for the first version, you need to, to be in the C drive and you can just create a, a, a directory like that. And then, after that, you can launch the simulation. And uh, when you launch the simulation, you get, this is at the end, you get first, there is the meshing. That means the software is going to, it translates the, the model that you have, the 3D model into, into a file that uh, OpenFOAM can read. And then that is the meshing done, which is done with the algorithm which have been designed by in, in our project to make uh, an efficient meshing and, uh, and an efficient solution. And then after you have the, the simulation and the moment this becomes uh, full blue, then you are, you are getting uh, this uh, small uh, um, te um, confirmation and then you get the simulation at the end. So we can just have a look on what you can do, then you are, you can check your height if you want. Of the different buildings, you can vary. You can choose your, your wind direction, the profile. You can also take a clipping plan also if you want to see just at some point part of it. That I will show you later, it's more interesting in the results. And then after you can once you have the whole thing, then you can run the simulation. So first, if you have not uh, tested, then in this case, the meshing, we have jumped a little bit with time. It takes a few minutes normally to finish, complete the meshing. So we will, and then after you have, you have, uh, you, you are doing the simulation. And then, Sorry, this, sorry, I'm, I'm doing. Okay, so this is the basic thing to start using the software for, uh, for, um, for external flow between buildings. So now uh, I think I would like just to explain a little bit more about this uh, way of using the software, which mean that uh, you, you should always think, I mean, this is not directly in relation, but I insist that you should always try to have movable, ex external movable shading, which is widely used in Europe and even you can say mandatory in Switzerland. And you can reduce the solar gain, the solar heat gain by almost 85% compared to a single clear glass or even 90. So it means external movable shading uh, is really something. It has, It doesn't really enter in the topic of today, but I just raised this issue because I think it's it's very important. The other thing also is that when we always think that we have to align, that you have to align the facade south, north and north, east, west and all this, actually with the kind of constraint you have in projects, sometimes you need to 
to be able to orient the building differently. If you have external movable shading, you are reducing so much the heat gain that it becomes a little bit more, you, you get more freedom in anal analyzing the, in, in let's say aligning the different facades. Then you have more freedom to organize uh, the building. And, uh, and then that means the concept for wind-driven ventilation can be more influential also in the design process. Now, if we look at the, the wind-driven uh, uh, natural ventilation, we see here some typical example which have been, uh, which have been uh, taken in UK, sorry. And here you see this is in Iran, the typical kind of, uh, of, uh, of wind catchers. So you can say this has been uh, completely forgotten, you can say in the recent history. And I think some people have come again, but it still remain marginal. But if you have a software that allows you to quantify more, it becomes also more interesting. And I think that one thing which is important is that most of the, the let's say in the curricula of uh, passive design of buildings, Mostly we are always talking of windward and leeward. That means you, you have buildings which are far away from each others. And you say, okay, this facade should face the wind and the other should be in the back. And then we should maximize the air passing through. But this is not possible in an Indian context most of the time, because you cannot have the luxury of all this, uh, of this condition. So it's not often possible to follow the rule, let's say windward and leeward sides. So you need to try to maximize the airflow through the buildings. I mean, uh, uh, in between the buildings so that you can describe new ways to try to get the wind inside the building. Uh, for instance, transforming the velocity from one direction to another. Suppose the wind, the wind is going parallel to the facade by having, let's say, special geometry, you can help in getting this velocity being transferred into a perpendicular velocity, 90 degree velocity of air entering into the building. And uh, the other thing also is that there are few systematic studies on wind-driven natural ventilation in urban context. There is one well-known study which has been done in, uh, in uh, Hong Kong and which is a very interesting one. I, I'm sorry, the, the, the reference is hidden a little bit below, but uh, you can, we, we, will, we will give it to you if you're interested. And then that was one of the reason also why we, we, we wanted to develop this. So, so the idea is to study the impact of blocks building layout, trying to take the local environment condition of the wind during the hot summer at night, the limits of the land plot so that your study are realistic, that you don't go anywhere else than what it should be. And then also another thing that you should take care is that you should take care if there are nearby buildings from another project and that or that you know is going to come, you can also integrate this and add them into your study so that you can really see almost on the local district area, you can say. And then you can after work on, on different uh, studies. So, so here, I think this is a kind of schematic example again, but you can see here that for instance, here is a typical case, but again, it's schematic, but it's really to illustrate. If you see here, we have building which are in rows like this, and the wind coming from this side. Now you see here the wind, the wind direction. And uh, here we have a wind at three meter per second. I mean, the far wind is at three meter per second. You can say at 10 meter height. Here you can see that the first, the first uh, facade, they are getting quite good velocity approaching the facade. Huh? But when you go in between the building, you see that the velocity is less than let's say 25 centimeter per second. So you cannot create, you can say a cross ventilation like this with this condition. So which means you have to look at different ways. So again, this is schematic, 
So, but it is how you, I mean, if you think you are taking the same buildings and rearrange them, and this is an extreme case, just to show the difference. If you are keeping the building as they are, you can see that you have hardly any velocity. If you are getting the, 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 the long facade much more parallel to the wind velocity, then you are going to keep, if you see here, it's three meter per second is the maximum in this case, then you will get something like three meter per second also between the building even. So you can see that if you would be able to have something that makes the air entering better in the building, you have much more energy. That means the, the, the good indicator is that you can say, our wind is going through the project. And so these people here at the end, they still have some, some wind that they could use. I mean, if the, if the architecture and the design is done so, in, in a way that you can get also uh, natural ventilation entering into the building. So, so here you have a schematic example just to show that rearranging, you would be able to keep decent velocity even in, uh, in the whole cases. So these are a thing that you can uh, very well study. And one of the feature we also have in the software is that you can generate PDF files because when you are working on different projects or different version of one, one project and one case, what you would like is to be able to take your time and look at the, at the, at the actual results uh, without going back and forth into the software. So here we have, if we take the, the typical kind of, of let's say, uh, flow in the process, you get drawing from architect clients or from your team, then you, you get them in DXF and then you, you, you enter them, for instance, this case, I don't know, and then you can make a simulation. Then after you say, no, it's not very good. We don't have velocity here. We don't know how it is. You can see the blue, the blue is when there is hardly any wind. The red is the highest wind. And then you, you make a change. Again, these are schematic change. It is really to illustrate how it can influence so you take then a qualitative assessment of these two and you can say, okay, here we have these few buildings having good winds, but the other one have nothing. So if we would rearrange again, it is, I know that for architects, you have a lot of constraint and you may not be able to do like this, but at least you can discuss early in the design to try maybe to find a compromise between these two or rearrange. And again, coming back to shading, if you have good external shading system, you, you are more flexible about the east-west uh, facade because you know you can reduce significantly, but that's a, another topic. And then, and then after you, you, can, you can from there go to more zooming into a building. And then in this case, you could, you could then uh, um, uh, go into the airflow across the building. So now uh, we can look at some of the results uh, that once, once you have completed the, the simulation, then you have this, uh, I will come back just to the software. I can show you some of the thing. I'll come to it just after, but I just show you the first principle that you can, you can, uh, you can use the software with, uh, with different kind of, um, of variable and, and visualization type that you can do. So one is to look at the pressure. So for instance, here we look at the pressure in Pascal and you can either have the, the velocity vector on the same. So you can also still see how the velocity is distributed with this arrow. So this, the arrow are the, the velocity at the, at far, and this is in the in the the district, you can say, where you can see that you have this uh, slice view. Then you can see the velocity magnitude also later. Uh, oh, sorry, this is yeah, this is just to show you when you are at the end, when you say okay, now it's done, the simulation is done, you are coming back, and you can 
you can then choose what you want to show. You want to show uh, something that that means in the height, and uh, and then you you can choose the height of the uh, the the let's say the coordinate. And then you can either keep the slice indicator or change the kind of thing, and then you can you can add also the velocity magnitude. Now now you have uh, something with the velocity. And then and then the next, sorry, the next one. Then you can add the velocity vector as well, so that you can you can visualize and you can change also the density. So you have the velocity in uh, in terms of iso iso curve or iso colors, and then you also see the how the velocity is moving around. And then you can add also labels. That means you can place labels on 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 the building or on the on also on the on on the slice. And then you can remove the label by clicking on the label and going into the the dustbin here. So here you can just see dynamically how you can add labels. So if you want to add velocity magnitude, you can just add velocity and you can then visualize the difference velocity. You can also, uh, so you can then visualize really what is happening. I think I closed the thing. And here, what is important also in this case is that this is a very important feature, I think, when you are studying a building, that you can, sorry, you can, you can see the pressure on the facade of the building. And this is, I think, a very interesting feature because you, you don't see the rest, but then you can see how your, your facades of the building are going to have a positive, a negative pressure. And this is this gives you also a good indication on how your system has been designed. Of course, this is again for, remember this is outside the building. That means when you have the wind passing by, it may not, it may not uh, work as well, unless you have specific feature I'll show you after. And here now you have also another thing, which is what is called the threshold representation. That means you can have uh, a zone where you are between, for instance, if you say, I want to know what is the area where I'm between zero and 0.6 meter per second, then you can choose this, uh, this threshold representation and it will show you all, all the volumes in which you have this, uh, this, this kind of of uh, of uh, let's say velocity between two values. Then after you can also change the direction of the of the plan. Of course, you can either be perpendicular in x, y, or z. You can move it when you have the slice indicator shown. You can move it as you want. Remember simply that when you keep it you will not it will move sometime without you willing and here you can again add labels so that you can see what is the velocity and then you can you can again move and regenerate you need to regenerate to see the results and here you see typically how the wind is on a on a vertical uh, uh, longitudinal cut so you can again see the what is happening there. And you can change the color map. That means you can change the, the limit of the, of the velocity. If you want to see something, it was between eight, nine, zero and nine before. Now it, you want to see better the colors with variation. So you can change the, the scale as well. And so, So you can also visualize uh, streamlines. This is more, I would say, 
indicative in a sense that it's uh, it is it is something where you, you can then uh, imagine that one molecule of air would be following uh, this path and it also shows the velocity here there is uh, something we have corrected now in the new version and here you can see that you can also change the density or you can zoom where you want so you can you can have a uh, uh, a vision a little bit on how the air is not only uh, the velocity and the direction at some point, but you can see really the, the flow. So you can see that the air is going. It, it, it could help also sometime maybe with some smell. If you feel there is a smell, you could see where it comes from. You can also change the seed box. That means the, the kind of volume in which you are getting the, the streamlines and you can get them more and less dense. And you can also remove the seed box if you don't want to see it. That means the seed box, that's where the streamline are coming in and going. Then we have another, uh, the threshold is again the same as I showed before. Here it's maybe not a very good example, but it shows you the kind of thing that you can do with the threshold. And uh, and here it is, and here it shows how you can densify your streamlines. You can you can add even more. You can be very dense. And this is more like now, as I just mentioned before, you can also show this building surface, and then you have the building surface and the streamline. And then you can have also the pressure, which is shown, and the velocity. Then you can adjust the scale, of course, as mentioned before. And then you can have this, uh, this you can adjust the range when you want to look at your facades to know what is the potential of the wind pressure on the, on the facade. And then you can also Again, I just color and scale, but I think I think I will not. And then from that, you can also generate a PDF report. You see here that you can generate a PDF report in any plan you want, horizontal, vertical, in one direction or the other. And you can choose what kind of uh, information you want to, to add to. For instance, here you say I want the pressure uh, between between uh, zero and eighteen meter uh, on the vertical axis, and then you want, and then you give the intervals that you want. That means how many plans, and then it will generate a plan in each every for each and every meter, and then after that, it saves a PDF file, and then you are getting uh, a uh, a PDF file, you can see here an example of just generating. Then you can choose, you can say, I want the velocity, you want it between 18 plan you want to generate, and then you can, you can just save it. Then it takes a little bit time to generate, and then you get the report Then you can see the a different height. You can then see the velocity at different height of the project. So it can also show you, for instance, how how you can uh, go into in comparing. And then I have shown you before how you could compare this. So. So now you can also uh, reload. You can reload existing results, not from the project you have been calculating right now, but you can reload results that is in the table that you are getting. When you reload results, you get a proposal, and then you you can do this. Uh, you can do this reload of the results. And then, and here, for instance, it was uh, a difference in the direction, the velocity, and the height was the same. And then you can view this difference one after the other, or as I was mentioning, you can generate for each of them 
PDF file where you can compare them out of externally of the of the software. So this is this part of external flow. Uh, you suggest that I go on with the with the third part where we are talking of flow inside, or do you want to? to take um, yeah. So we have a few questions. Uh, I just wanted to check how um, how long will it take for you to go through the internal flows? Uh, I think about twenty minutes, maybe, or something like that. Okay. Uh, so it's the already. I mean, I can go faster, or it depends. Yeah, yeah. So if we can go a little faster uh, on the internal flows, okay. I think that would be helpful. Maybe ten minutes, if possible, and then you know we can take questions together. We okay. have many questions coming in, so um, okay, we can do that after that. Yeah. Okay. Fine. Yeah. All right. So anyway, we can come back on each of the presentation after the snow. Uh, now let me just open the third one where it is. So three, yeah, that will be one, and then it will. Oh, wait, wait, I'm just not at the right place. So I will. I think I will. I will. Okay, here it is. I would say now that you have seen how you can do external flows. The interesting thing after is to see how you can try to get this wind either passing nearby or reheating the the facade. How you can uh, that try to to have a better understanding. So the result visualization. I will come back just for the few things, and I think I will I will spend more time a little bit on some of the typical example. So so I would say. The general concept to improve natural cross ventilation is that I think one of the basic thing which has been has been quite forgotten is that if you want to be able to give, let's say, to keep energy to transfer transform it into uh, natural cross ventilation, you need to keep velocity of the air as much as possible through the project. Then after, of course, it means you need to strategy to force the air to enter the buildings. That means with uh, things like window open to the outside or other thing like that. And so I, I, can, I will show you a few examples. For instance, here we have this. This was a kind of test we did also at the beginning just to show a little bit how it works. You can see we have, uh, I'll explain just after the layers. That means in a building, you can have a, a, a block which is which is uh, entire, like I showed you before. And now on top of this, you can add a part which is open with a new with a new DXF file. I will explain that just after. And here you can see that with the wind coming like this, we are able to generate quite a bit of velocity across, let's say, these typical rooms or flat or whatever we call them. We call them. And I think. If you look at this kind of example, for instance, if we say here is something where we have air passing by and suppose we have maybe a little bit more uh, prominent here kind of thing, which could be either windows, you know, windows of this kind, which are maybe openable in the right side of the helping wind to enter, then you can force. And that means what you're doing is you start so here it is just again schematic example. Here you have we have op the same kind of opening on these three buildings, one after the other. The wind is coming at 4.5 meter per second far away, but it's at three actually. Sorry, three meter per second coming through, and then you see that the first inlet they have 2.1 meter per second at the entrance, and the other one hardly get 0.4. So it, it, it's interesting to see in relation. Now, if you say, okay, now I will change the orientation. Again, these are schematic example, really. You should not say this is a solution. But if you do, if you bring the air three meter per second and you are in uh, going along the facade, then you can see that there is a much better distribution 
even on the on the one which was behind now it has got some wind of course you you have to adjust all this but it's just to really show that uh the 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 understanding of uh, natural ventilation has made a change in in your mind when you are using such a tool because it it helps you in visualizing in comparison rather than absolute values the absolute values are less important but it's to show that okay we have this solution so these poor guys they will heat up like anything and this one will have a nice comfort and if you go like this you can see already that qualitatively of course it's not perfect but you can see that you already have better and if you do a better example i show you some other so how do you how do you do to to what i was mentioning before is this conventional windward leeward concept is no more let's say sufficient to look at buildings you you need to find ways that the wind wherever it comes from but with some velocity must be able to be transformed in velocity of air entering and airflow entering so that means innovating system system uh, even coming back to old things that were used long time ago so here the concept of layers of building and i think this is the this is a simple concept actually is that you need if you have this building and you say i would like to have a facade which goes up to the sill which is closed and after i have some opening again i have something above the the opening then you, you can define three kinds of of uh, of drawing in a sense of so this drawing the the a is the part which is below and it is the block because you are not going to open all the building because one thing that we should know is that when you have natural ventilation the air which is passing through the building is actually few percent only of the global flow so which means that the assumption here is that the the opening from one flat or two flats or five flats it won't change much compared to if there was no flow through the building at all so it will not influence really and so that is why we recommend to do analysis of one floor or maybe you can do two or three floor if you want but if you have a 20 floor uh, building don't make 20 floor open it will take a lot of time to calculate and you will not get interesting results so here you see the idea is you create you you enter this then you import this as well and this as well so here and then after you will add on so you have a bottom top then you have the close the b is the let's say the close part of the facade with the design and then you have the in between where you have the openings and so so now you have these five layers so i, I will not spend too much time because this is explained in the manual also quite a bit and then you can you can see that you can uh, uh, in the editor itself uh, create these things with different uh, you can I, I think i will jump here because i think if there are a lot of questions we might be short so i think the main thing is to see that you can add then i will just you can add then this first part of the facade above the first block let's say and then after at five meter you say okay we start adding this closed facade on these three buildings and then after at the end we have we have the, again the closed facade and then we add the open part above and you see this is the this is the block height five meter let's say for an example then from five to six you have the 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 closed facade and then from six to eight let's say for instance you have the open facade and then you have this and then you can add again the top thing above the facade below the slab we still have some height where there is no opening but we still have a profile of the facade and then you have the top and then you have the complete system so So in in this case, uh, yeah, here you can the four. No, that's not a good one. No, I think I will jump this, and then you can. Then you are in the simulation setup, and you can see here the 
the building. Again, these are virtual examples, but you can see here that you could have, for instance, either a window which open to the outside or, or a, a kind of a shutter or whatever that can help. And then you can, you can have the, the simulation set up and then you are again running the case. So here you can visualize the thing and you can still, there you can use the clipping plane and also go into and see how it looks like if it's correct. So this is again a kind of uh, example. Then you define and then you can run and then you can see that you can very well have a, a view on how it looks like. So you can check if your drawing is correct. And then after when you have the results, then you can clip and visualize into the, the flats also, and, and you can go on different height. And then, um, then after, again, you have the, I think you can run the simulation and then you, once you are through, then you get the results. So I think, I think this is, if we have to go fast, I think that's what I wanted to show you, but I think I will still go a little bit like this. So you can see that we see the, here some of the streamline into the, and, and if you put more density, you will see, you would see the air going through the flats in this case. And, uh, and I think here I will, and then you have the building surface again with the, with, you can have the, the velocity or you can open, clip the plane and you can have a look at the, at the, also the pressure. You can visualize the pressure you have on the facades or, okay. Now uh, I would say another example of thing you can do is to make, for instance, a shaft. Suppose you have a central shaft and you would like to see with the wind passing on top, how can you create a suction effect? So if you want first to check, you can also have, let's say the bottom would be a block, right? And then after you have openings in between, and then you add again a block because you, you, you are interested in seeing at one level how it works. Then after you can of course do more, but, and then after you add on top. So these are the, the three, the four DXF file you need to add layer by layer. And then after that, you can you can run the you can run this and see the influence. So now maybe one thing about the because I know that you are in the process of uh, working on your projects. I think uh, what we have presented you is the version one. We are now about to launch the version two, which will have. Uh, quite few no, uh, new feature, but essentially three, I would say, which are of interest, I think, is that if you are in a very dense area are not able to bring wind to the buildings, you can very well have a low energy fan. I mean, energy doesn't come into picture, but you can have what a fan, which is, uh, which is a model by a pressure jump. That means if you are on top of this shaft, if we come back to this one, suppose you have a big fan here, you have a jump of pressure between above and below this, uh, the fan here. And then you can also then calculate how much airflow would come through the entrance and, and you could do the complete modeling as well. But if you want to go fast and understand, if, if you suppose that you have the, a typical good distribution in the shaft, and no pressure loss in the shaft, then normally if you take one flat, you already get a good approximation of what you would get with a given differential of pressure and then having opening which are sized properly for the shaft. We have, for instance, done an, uh, uh, um, a project in Rajkot where we have done a test actually on a system like this and we were able with some uh, calibrated output uh, exhaust from the flats to, to move 12 air change per hour with a fan, which is taking only one watt per square meter of each floor of the floor of the flats. 
So you can see that this is something which is of interest because ventilative cooling, I think in India is something which has a great potential, but normally it has been done through HVAC system, which are using a lot of energy to move the air. In this case, it's very less pressure loss. And then you can also in the new version measure the airflow across an opening. So for instance, if I show you here, you will be able to put here uh, just, just four points and it will tell you how much air is coming. And here the same, you get also how much air is going through. So you can like this very well visualize as well what is happening when you are changing size of openings or when you are uh, then the next thing is that you can also add one or more resistance. I mean, when I say you can addition more fans uh, also, and you can addition more resistance. And that means the resistance, typically mosquito net, we know that generally if we take the conventional way of calculating this with the Bernoulli equation or modified Bernoulli equation, we often have something like uh, a resistance, which is almost three times more for airflow in natural mode than if you have a fully open window. And we know that mosquito net are very often uh, used in flats. And so, so it is, um, so now at the end, what I want to show you is that if for the one who have not done it before is that you can go on the BEEP uh, website and then you can, uh, you can see the, the BEEP value Prava uh, site where you can download actually Bib Vayu Prava and you can also download the, the the manual. The manual is an entail more or less what I have shown you also. And so and then after one thing important I think is that you become a member of the forum so that you are identified and when you send us some question or some remarks or some bugs that you find then we can also react more better so this is the form for the user forum. And I think I would encourage you to become member because that means we will then know also see the people who are really using the software. We can, we can also answer to your question. We can also uh, maybe prepare things for a future version three maybe, but let's be realistic for the time being. Version two is already something. So that's it. So thank you for your attention. And I think I'm, I'm ready to go to questions now, I think. So I will- start. Thank you, Pierre. Just one thing, if you could copy the link to the website that you showed on your slides in the chat for yeah. our participants. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yes. So I will, uh, yeah, I will do this from the directly here. And then I will go there. Yeah, here. So, John. So that's it. And then. Yeah, thank you. Let me also have. Uh, the... I will actually reshare it. Uh, yeah. To share only with the panelists so i've shared it with everybody okay. Okay. yeah not a problem i've shared it with everyone so here's the link where you can download this tool and uh, make use of it um jumping to our questions um so um peer one question is um can we analyze 3d structures with windows doors and vents also i think this was asked towards the beginning of the presentation and uh, to analyze what exactly i didn't get to analyze 3D structures with windows, doors, and vents. And vent. Vent, vent. Wind. Ventilator. I, oh, well, I mean, it, it will be in the in the version two. It will be available after a few weeks, actually, because yeah. at, at at the moment the only way to do it is you, you can take one building alone and decide the velocity. And in mm -hmm. case it comes almost, I mean, you, you can calculate backward. Because if you if you if you if you define uh, the wind velocity at one level, if you take a, a, a ten meter, for instance, height, if you put uh, let's say one one floor of a building, 
then you can very well draw the building uh, as you want. I mean, with these DXF uh, um, layers. And then if you impose velocity, then you will see the pressure loss across. And then it would indirectly give you uh, an answer to what, how would look like the ventilator, the, the fan in this case. That's, but right. this is, this will be added really in the version two in latest one month, I would say, till we have the really the release. So for people, we will keep you posted on this when the, when the new version two is really available. We are now in the, I would say, we are in the version 1.9899 almost. So we have really, we are really just as few debugs and few things, but it's really working well. And it's really also more, the, the new thing also is that you will also be able to modify drawings inside the environment. So that means it will give you more flexibility also to, to do this kind of thing. All right, thanks. Um, next question. Is it possible to import a 3D model from Revit or, you know, those kind of softwares? That's not the intention. I explain you why. Because most of architects are not using Revit when they are doing early schematic design. And the idea that you get from the architect, it was conceived like this. When you, when the, the idea is you, you, you bring 2D drawing, horizontal drawing, let's say plans, plans. And then you, 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 you introduce the height and that's it. And then you have the 3D model, which is directly prepared for open foam. Because if you want to do it yourself, you can do it, of course. I mean, I mean, some of the advanced user of open foam, they can do this, but it's not the, it's not at all the intention of this software. This software is you enter the, the, the plane of one floor at, in 2D then you, you, you just set up the height and then you can run the simulation. Then you can move the building, then you can. So it, it's a, the idea is as quick as possible. It can even be used in meet, during meetings actually, because I have not shown you, but, but the, I, I could show you uh, uh, the time, uh, for instance, if I, the, the time that you have for a simulation, for instance, if I, if I come back for such a simulation, for instance, where is it though? If I, if I create a new, if I create, oh no, do you see my screen? No, you don't no, see No, you're it. not sharing your screen yet. Okay, okay. So for people to see, I think I can show the screen at the same time. And then, uh, okay, and then I will, I will put this. And then if I say I have, uh, this or this, I think I'll take this one just as an example. Now, if I, if I duplicate, I say, I make a new case and then I say, now I want uh, maybe to move this, to rotate it. I mean, just for, uh, just for demo. And then I can, uh, okay. Then now I say, I say, okay, it is the version 10. Then I can launch the simulation saying I have a wind of three meter per second. It comes from the north like this, and then it is, and then I can run the simulation. So now you can see while it's running, you see how it's fast. Okay, we can go on with the chat during this, <laughs> the question. All right, uh, another question. Is it possible to enter latitude and longitude for a site for accurate wind direction analysis? No, because right no. now we can only do cities, right? I mean, the, the, what we have also now added in the new version is that you can enter your own wind profile. Because that was a question also of some users, but entering the latitude and longitude doesn't help because the wind is not a function of latitude and longitude. It's a, it's a function of the local uh, condition. So I, to, to me, I think the future, as I look at it, is that with the more and more frequent use of drones. The idea is that in the future, it's not in relation to this project, but I think that now when you have a big project and you really want to know the wind, you can use a drone, which is pre-programmed, that has, a, that has an, a wind anemometer and direction as well. And it goes, let's say three meter by three meter at night in summer. And you get then uh, your own wind profile. But latitude and longitude doesn't help really, because if you are, 
uh, it's because th then you you can better use directly the the wind uh, the the velocity with what you should use at night is the velocity which is the one which is uh, w w which correspond best where you are in a sense it's uh, I, I agree it, it is frustrating that we don't have more wind data but there are some some maps and I think that. There, there is no, uh, there is no ideal answer to that. Okay, so just another follow-up question to this: so latitude and longitude is not uh, possible. No. Is it possible to use an EPW file or weather file, which gives an hourly uh, or? No, because we, we we are we are doing a simulation for a given wind mm -hmm. at some at some time. That means what what we recommend to do i was mentioning before climate consultant for instance if you, if you have if you have climate consultant nearby i mean if you have a city near where you are the the, the best way is to use climate consultant and go to the wind rows you know at the end mm -hmm. and you can choose for instance in summer i don't know you can take either uh, in delhi or if you are in hyderabad or for instance hyderabad is a good example because there is a lot of wind you you can then see at night what is the wind direction the, the, the most prevalent and also what is the kind of velocity you are getting at night and then you can just uh, enter this into the because th there is no dynamic simulation you are not doing hour by hour the simulation you do mm -hmm. it for the most prevalent kind of wind direction and that's why also in the new version we'll have something that you can directly keeping the same case you could directly rotate the the wind and say okay now we are changing the wind so you see now the meshing is done all right okay thank you um so there were many questions actually about uh, the weather file we can import a weather file i think uh, this answers it those doesn't questions. help really because because yeah. if you have a uh it's it's uh i think that because doing dynamic simulation with a with a cfd is still something of the future you know, when you want to enter, it doesn't help actually. The, the, the main thing is, I mean, it's useful and climate consultant is using EPW file anyway. So hmm. you are directly getting, indirectly you are getting the data from the weather file. Yeah, but it's 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 a point in time. It's not you you know for an entire oh, year. I think that's time, the of course. I mean, but but if you see, depending on this, in India, it's quite often that the southwest west is dominant when it's very hot, and and what you have to see is really, you should optimize the night cooling when it is the hottest part of the year. So, for instance, if we see a project we had in Rajkot, you can see it's a full west. Uh, with a quite high velocity at night and it's very very so there are some other places where it's moving more of course but but i would say it's not uh it's it's there is no easy answer to that all right okay uh next question so the cfd model only shows the velocity profile however is it viable to visualize the heat transfer between buildings and airflow no, no, it's not, and it's intentional. Why? Because because here to have a fast answer system, if we go and do the heat transfer, I mean, what I have shown you before uh, was that if you have, let's say, uh, 13, 15 air change per hour, you have six times more cooling power for the same delta T between the air entering and the building. So this is for me a sufficient data that you you if you want to do the if you want to know how much you're removing you can only do it with a dynamic a simulation model like energy plus or design builder or something like this where then what you can do is try to equate the the compare what you get in the building with this software at some point and see whether you get something similar when you are running with a design builder uh, the simulation because, because I mean, there is all this issue of the CP, yeah, the pressure coefficient that you have to give. And, uh, and then after, if you want to add the mosquito net and all that in, uh, in, um, in design builder, it's not so easy to do all this simply, but it's also, mm -hmm. 
you, there is no at the moment there is no direct connection of course in energy in, in design builder with the cfd it's possible to have outside or inside but as far as i know there is no cross ventilation possibility with uh, with the cfd of uh, of design builder okay all right uh, next question uh, how can we model the effect of trees which have a major impact on wind speed in pedestrian zones and low height buildings you can you can very well uh, model it uh, with something which i mean if you come with a drawing and, and make maybe different uh, you, you you can make something i mean something which is transparent you can do it actually you can very well make a wall where, where you put layers where you have openings or you can you you can mimic i would say trees but i remember this this software is, of course, design uh, has been sought in the frame of the BEEP project, where we work essentially on relatively high-rise residential building. So mm -hmm. trees are there only generally for till the what fourth, fifth floor, not higher. And so, right. so, so here you can see now we are through the simulation already while we are talking. Okay. And now you get directly the results loaded. Mm. So now you can see the results of what we had and then you can, I mean, uh, we don't take time for that, but just to show mm. that you can uh, generate, then you can remove the slice and then you see, you see what is happening with this so I'm, I'm not using it just for real, real stuff, but just to show you that in a few minutes, we got, what, four minutes and we get the result, something like that. Uh, yeah. So if you do it with a real CFD, it will take at least uh, 20 or 30 minutes. Yeah. Even more. Hmm. All right. Another software specific question. If, are there any maximum limits for X, Y, and Z domain for the model? Mm, I would say I showed you before. I think I can just show you this uh, this picture, for instance, where we have. I think we can go up to one kilometer by one kilometer okay. almost. It seems. Right. I, I have. I, I will check this data. We will add it. It's a good question. We'll add it in the manual because because actually I I will just check on the version. I think it was on the version one. Yeah, on the one. Let me just show you. Uh, yeah, on here. We are able to see uh, the tool right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm just looking for okay, the. Okay, sure. For the, yeah, this example, I'll just show you this and then show you. So this is, for instance, uh, something where it was something like 700, almost one kilometer length and 600 meter width, and we were not at the limit actually. Mm -hmm. It took more time to calculate, but okay. uh, but it was uh, so. So I would say the to mm -hmm. us we can clearly go to district. Uh, I mean, in municipal municipal district design can be taken care, of, not just one project. You can you can add, and what I was saying also, you can add the nearby buildings. And what we could do also is maybe to prepare some kind of mimic trees. But I think that can be. That's some work, some work that the student can also do. <laughs> sure. Okay, another question. If it is possible to model different surface roughnesses, like if you want to mimic a large lake inside a project. No, because the lake, anyway, we are not going to, to make the heat transfer. Right. Hmm. So, so there is no, I mean, it's intentionally non, it is an isothermal model. Hmm. Because if you start adding then the thermal behavior, it will multiply by 10 or 100 the, the, the simulation hmm. time. Hmm. Okay. Um, uh, all but right. The, Another... uh, maybe, maybe just one thing to add. The roughness in natural ventilation has not so much importance, actually. Mm -hmm. Because you can say the opening are generally quite big compared to the roughness. So okay. I would say the, the, the roughness may do if you were doing, uh, if you do a simulation of a whole city and you change the roughness, of course, it will change. But when you do locally like this, 
it is really the the object of the building which are really influencing and there their uh, roughness does not really impact the, the airflow. Okay. Um, another question, um, can we give the elevation of the site, for example, if the site is on the hill or the site has contours and the buildings are on the contoured level, is it possible to do that in uh, this software? You, you mean a, a non-flat terrain? Yes. Hilly terrain, for example. Hilly terrain, you could do it by doing your own DXF I mean, the, the, the software is calculating in 3D, but we import DXF in, two, in 2D, but you can very well make your own uh, mountain if you want with different DXF. Mm -hmm. So it, it's more like you, you, you could generate it. And then uh, for instance, if you, have, uh, if you are working with, uh, with Revit or something like this, you can certainly take slice, you know, and generate slice and you just give the slice a different height and then you can, it, it gives you a, a mountain and you can put your building on it. But it's not, uh, it's, it's, not, it's not a software which will replace a $100,000 uh, software. Mm. It will sure. not. Yeah. <laughs> it's free. <laughs> All <Remember>. right. <laughs> Sorry? Yeah, I, I mean, remember it's a free software. Yes. Uh, okay, also uh, today we've looked at cuboids essentially, right, as building forms, but right. if, if a building, there's a curved roof or if, you know, the buildings are slightly twisted or something, is it possible to do that? The curved roof, again, we will have at the moment to be to be done through through tricks of layers. Mm -hmm. So that means you, you can have a kind of stepwise thing going. Uh, mm -hmm. you, 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 it is not, we are not there again to make very fancy architecture. We are there to give the solutions for mostly residential, you can say low and middle, uh, middle income level, not for penthouse. <laughs> right. Okay. Uh, there's also one feedback that we received in one of the questions, actually. Yeah. So, uh, uh the question is, uh, when I change the wind direction in the simulation result, the whole building orientation setup changes. So it's actually not an error, but the results change and, you know, it becomes difficult to compare the two schematic diagrams. Uh, uh, and also the, this person is talking about one screenshot from your slides. So, um, yeah, I, I have to understand what you say, because when you are changing the wind direction, the, the plan remained the same mm -hmm. and the direction remained the same. So, so I, I think maybe I have, I have not shown correctly the thing in the sense that, uh, I mean, if we, if we go on this, if you look at this, uh, this correlation, if you put the wind like this or like this, it will still remain normally mm -hmm. on the same orientation. So when you take a, when you take a, a PDF uh, shot, let's say, it, it, it would remain with the same kind of, uh, of, of drawings. Uh, what I have not checked is if exactly the limit, but, but now also in the PDF, we, you, you can also set the limits. So that means you mm -hmm. can also make it uh, really looking the same. Mm -hmm. uh, but this is something that I think these are good questions that we will uh, take care in the manual of the new version to to take care. If, if we if we can get all what you have the, the summary of all this, we'll of course uh, take advantage of this question. And remember. yeah, we can send, we can share these questions with you, Peter. Should not be a problem. Okay. Okay. Uh, next question: uh, Can the results of CFD simulation be integrated with variation in temperature and humidity as we go up? I think by up they mean you know uh, increase in elevation. Uh, that I would say I'm not sure, frankly speaking, because generally when when you get the EPW file, you get only at one height. Mm, so yes. it's, it's all assumptions. <laughs> so I don't think you get this easily. Again, it comes to the drone. If mm. you want to have everything, you will have temperature, humidity, wind, and then velocity mm. and direction with a drone. Mm. Then you can you could make it, but it's a study in itself. Mm. I don't 
I don't think that it has ever been done in a project. I've never seen even a, a research on this, even though it is certainly of interest, but but uh, yeah, I'm no, I'm not aware of studies on this kind of variation of humidity. Uh, mm. Because generally, let's say the, the very first levels maybe would be influenced by the local humidity around, but after you are in air that's coming from far away, so it has been mixed. If there is a sea, it will have been humidified by the sea at a quite high, let's say on quite a high uh, uh, kind of height elevation. Mm. So I, I, but, but frankly speaking, I don't know. Mm. Okay. Another interesting question, um, can the software compare different layouts and suggest things like rotate facade at 45 degrees to get maximum natural ventilation? Like this is one example, but is the software capable to do that? No, I mean, if you if somebody wants to make a PhD on artificial intelligence, welcome. <laughs> because because actually you know it's 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 uh, even even in the expensive software we don't have that. Yes. Hmm. So so why why could we have this? In the <laughs> software? I think it's I think it's it, it's a nice idea, but I think mm -hmm. also you know architecture is something which is not a machine, mm -hmm. and and I think as an engineer I think that architect has still to think about how he's designing his building and how he's rotating them and you cannot rotate mathematically buildings no mm -hmm. yeah i mean what i showed is is kind of schematic example to really show mm -hmm. what kind of potential difference you have but it doesn't say this is a solution it says it gives you a kind of of kind of uh, space in which you can move and say okay we could do that or could that and i and i think we have quite few examples where we can definitely show how much you can improve right uh, so Pierre, also we have been looking at wind speed throughout this session is it also possible to look at air temperature no the air temperature is not part because actually mm -hmm. we i mean the air temperature is the one you have corresponding to the time you are you are but but generally speaking again the idea if you look i think what's for the temperature, what you have again is to come to the wind rows and the temperature. Yes. If, mm. if you take, I mean, Climate Consultant is not my favorite software, but it's very good and it's free. And also, so, and that you, you can very well, at least with EPW file of one location, you can very well get, let's say, in from mid-May till mid-June, the summer in the evening between uh, 10 o'clock or 11 in the evening till six in the morning you can see how is the temperature and the wind as well mm -hmm. so i think this is the tool which is the easiest to use otherwise you can do your own analysis on that also with the apw fine right uh, just last couple of questions i will take because i think we're also running out of time is it possible to run bad simulations yes it, it is in the new version it will be Hmm. That will be the batch will be there. Yeah, you you can hmm. run uh, in for one case for one uh, for one case in a project you will be able to run a different simulation and also rotating the wind can be also done with the batch. All right. Um, okay, one more question: Would you suggest using this tool over Ansys Fluent if we have access to that tool? Are you aware of this tool, Ansys uh, Fluent? Uh, this way, of course. But yes. hmm. <laughs> I would say Ansys Fluent is, I mean, as long as you are in academics, you can use it. But the moment you are in private, you will never use it again. Mm -hmm. Because it's, I think the license, if I'm not wrong, is $50,000 for one mm -hmm. license. I think mm -hmm. so. That's the range. And then after you have the, of course, this is perpetual maybe. But even mm -hmm. if you take an annual license, it will be in the range of ten to 20,000 euro or dollars. And uh, and then I would say I would I mean of course we when when we are doing project with our commercial software which is called Flowvent not Fluent we are uh, but we it costs a lot to us and we have a market for that but in India I don't think at commercial level a lot of people will invest into Fluent so my my and I'm not comparing Fluent with that it is one three degree of magnitude order more powerful than this tool. 
This tool is as only one aim. It is to help people in thinking about how you make that the air, the night ventilation is, and I think the order of magnitude are sufficient. You will not get much better answer with flow with fluent in a sense. If if something is good or bad with this software, you can see it. With fluent, you will have a better maybe. Uh, more accuracy on the difference, but not, but you will get the same answer at the end. Right. So, mm -hmm. so I think that, but I'm not comparing because it's just completely, I mean, this software is, let's say, yeah, two, three order of magnitude less sophisticated than Fluent is, can be. Sure. And also right. using Fluent is much more difficult also. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, from a user perspective, there is no entry barrier with this software, you can say. You can train people, I guess, in half a day to use hmm. it. Definitely, yes. All right, one last question, Pierre. Is it possible to investigate stack effect through the software? Actually, this is something we are thinking of, frankly speaking, not adding, let's say, the heat transfer within the solid, but be able to give the, the let's say, the, the wall temperature of a shaft, for instance, and see how air moves. We are considering, but we are not promising anything because, because first our project will end uh, in the next seven months. And so after we, we have to see who is going on with the development also, because the idea is that um, at the moment we are doing it in within the finance condition of our project, which is a chance. But after that, it won't be there. So, so development like this might be taken over by some IIT in India, for instance, because I think there are really three levels. One is, as I mentioned, the simple user mistakes or question. That's easy to answer. Then there are some bugs because there will be bugs always in a, pro in a software. And then after there are this question, how can you extend the capability of a software? But that's real real development and then you need to have highly specialized people in open form in this case mm -hmm. because in our case we have not gone too much in detail in the development of what you can do with open form we have used whatever was available but if you want to do this it would take uh, one or two phd i guess to do this if you want to keep it free and high performance right all right, thank you so much, Pierre. I think that's all from the questions that we got in today. Um, once again, I would like to thank you for this very insightful presentation. And I think this tool can prove to be extremely useful in an early design stage. Uh, also, I found it extremely convenient uh, to do CFD simulations, which you know otherwise can become very cumbersome with other kind of tools. Um, to all our participants who have attended today, I'm sure it must be uh, intriguing to, you know, learn about this tool. And you can definitely make use of this tool, uh, you know, to make design decisions. And this tool can provide you with uh, evidence-based solutions. And I think your reviewers would um, uh, be happy to look at such kind of ev evidence and, you know, it will help them understand your thought process as well. So do make use of this tool as much as you can in the next deliverable. Um, and thank you once again, Pierre, for your presentation today and for sharing uh, how, you know, uh, how I, to use this tool. I have just one additional remark is that yes. uh, I'm very, I mean, the moment we come with the version two out, I would, I would, uh, I would agree to do again a webinar explaining the difference and showing maybe the more more interesting kind of things sure. so that so that it can be used but people don't hesitate to send emails or in the forum put questions and remarks so that we can be, because more and more people use it more and more we'll be able to improve the things that are possible not right. beyond what we can but Yes. And so and and we are looking forward for that. I think because it's a it's a good uh, right. So good. Uh, on the Beep website, you can also join the forum. And you know, if you have questions about this tool, you can definitely put in uh, on the forum. Um, I think that would be helpful. Um, apart from that, yes, definitely we can do another webinar. Uh, Pierre, we'll uh, talk about it and you know see uh, uh, how we can work the logistics of that. Yes. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you for all for listening.
And okay. all right, bye. I'm hoping you are going to dig into this and see. Yeah. <laughs> dive into diving into the mm -hmm. into the CFD. Sure. Okay. Yes. Thank bye. you. Bye bye. Bye.